What's up guys, Ebert here with Hardware Connects, and in a world where wireless gaming mice are slowly starting to dominate the uh, peripheral market space, it's always good to go back and check out some amazing wired gaming mouse. And in this case, I'm very excited to share my experience using the HyperX Pulse Fire Surge gaming mouse. You heard that right, a gaming mouse from HyperX. In fact, their very first entry into the gaming mice market was uh, with the launch of the Pulsefire FPS mouse uh, that retailed for $40, which was amazing considering an entry-level product, uh, especially for their very first launch. And then for an extra $20, they later on came up with the pro version of the exact same mouse uh, that came with a better sensor and of course, RGB lighting. Now we have this the Pulsefire Surge that retails for $70. And this thing is a well-rounded package for that price because it's got a fantastic sensor, uh, great ergonomics, and the RGB lighting is just amazing, especially since it's 2018 and you know, you've know you gotta have it on a gaming mouse at this point. So given how saturated the gaming mice market is, does HyperX really have a chance to compete with the big brands like Logitech, SteelSeries, and a few more? Well, let's find out. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. The new Masterkiss MK750 keyboard comes with a comfortable magnetic wrist rest, beautiful RGB light bar on the perimeter and perky lighting control with a variety of Cherry MX switches and a bottom Type-C connection. Cooler Master doing it right. Check it out below. Okay, so I'm aware of some of the quality control issues that some existing uh, owners of this particular mouse have experienced, especially with the primary left and right click buttons. Uh, essentially, the gap between those two buttons were was pretty minimal, so when you're clicking them, uh, both of them would sort of actuate at the same time, and it was pretty uncomforting, but HyperX has addressed that problem by increasing the gap, and they've addressed that uh, very quickly, so if you have a defected unit, you can actually fill out this form online uh, with the model number located behind the mouse and then you uh, HyperX will take care of you right away. So I'll leave a link to that form in the description down below just in case, uh, but I do have the unit that has been completely addressed. So let's move on to the review. Kicking things off, let's talk about the design. And HyperX has taken a safe route this time, uh, going with a somewhat minimalist approach. Uh, there's nothing aggressive here, which I really like. The body is ambidextrous, uh, although the forward and backward buttons are right hand only. Uh, it is a little bit on the slimmer side when compared to my G403 wireless mouse, but given that I have big hands, uh, the claw grip was my preferred setting. Uh, but if you have smaller hands, you can comfortably rest your palms on top of the body. And I have to say, throughout my usage, both editing and gaming on it, the experience was really comfortable. Uh, you really have to feel this mouse for yourself in the first place because it really is an amazing body. Uh, it's very compact, not too super bulky. So if you're looking for something a little bit on the portable side as well, this is certainly something that you should look into. The build quality of this mouse is really good for the price. It's mostly constructed out of hard plastic materials, uh, and I didn't experience any signs of creaking, which is awesome. I also appreciate the matte texture choice throughout the body. It really complements the grip and it's miles better than the glossy plastic finishes uh, that you get with some other gaming mice uh, that also attract scratches and grease easily. The mouse weighs at 100 grams, which might be a little bit on the heavier side for some users, but I was pretty comfortable gaming on it. Do note that the weight isn't customizable. The cable is braided, but unfortunately it's pretty quick at forming kinks and part of that has to do with the thickness of the braid and the type of material that they've used. Now, ironically, the HyperX Cloud Alpha Gaming headset comes with this amazing braided cable. It's super smooth and uh, very flexible, so it doesn't really form kinks that easily. And I really wish if they use the same material choice with the headset cable uh, on the mouse, because really, as you can see, uh, it is just, it's not gonna last that long, at least that's what I think. But you can easily address this issue by adding a mouse bungee to your setup. But if you're on the other side of the train, well, this might be an annoying factor. Uh, now, I do have a question for you guys though. Do you think switching to a, this might be one of the reasons why, you know, gamers are switching to a wireless setup because, you know, not being able to deal with the cables and all that kind of stuff. Is it is it a primary reason to switch from a wired gaming mouse to a wireless gaming mouse? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. The Pulsefire Surge features Omron switches rated for 50 million clicks, which is amazing. Uh, and the primary left and right buttons feature great tactile feedback. They don't require a lot of pressure to press, which is nice, uh, so you can concentrate more on the gameplay. The scroll wheel has a nice grip to it, and the scroll steps are well-defined, which is great. The DPI shift button is right beside it, and it can cycle between three different DPI levels, plus there are some key combinations that can let you adjust certain settings within the mouse. For example, if you want to adjust the brightness of the LED, you just have to hold down the DPI shift button and hit the backward button to um, reduce the brightness and you know turn off the RGB lighting, but if you want to increase it and if you want to turn that back on, you can hit the DPI shift button and press the forward button. It's very intuitive. Again, little details that sort of add to an amazing experience 
uh, using this mouse. Moving on to the sensor, well, this mouse features the Pixar 3389 optical sensor that's rated to go as far as 16,000 DPI, which is again, way too overkill. Uh, but at this point, I think it's just a marketing gimmick. I was really comfortable gaming at the standard, you know, 800 to 1000 DPI, which is sort of my preferred setting. But needless to say, tracking has been fantastic and I really enjoyed my time both editing and gaming on it. Jumping into a quick Battlefield 1 session, I was able to quickly aim and shoot my targets faster. Uh, there was also zero acceleration, which was amazing. And lift off distance is also very low, meaning when you're adjusting or readjusting your position, you won't really experience any interruptions within the gameplay. The defined scroll snaps really help when it comes to switching weapons. So overall, a fantastic uh, gaming experience that you're getting for $70. You know what else you do get for $70? RGB lighting, my friends. And this mouse looks absolutely stunning, especially in the dark. Uh, there is a subtle lighting throughout the body that looks very consistent. The diffusion is also very nice and the gradient is certainly minimal. It's super smooth, so you're really not gonna notice the LEDs uh, inside. Uh, it really looks amazing in the dark and it gives you a cool 360 degree subtle effect. There are two individual zones that you can customize. So there's the logo uh, that's located in the palm rest area. And you can also adjust the uh, individual LED colors within the mouse, uh, which is also pretty nice. The driver software is actually fairly easier to navigate around with. As you can see, you're greeted with a physical overview of the mouse, but I do want to point out that you have to create a profile in order to customize uh, the functions like lighting and all that kind of stuff. It's not really a big deal, but it's something to keep note of. Uh, and as you can see on the left-hand side, you do have the option to adjust the lighting on it. So you can cycle between different effects like solid, color cycle, breathing, wave, trigger. And of course you do have the option to turn the lighting completely off if you're not a fan of RGB lighting. Now, when you switch over to the advanced tab, this is where things get a little bit interesting because you now have the ability to individually adjust uh, the colors on the LEDs uh, depending on the effect. And you also have the ability to adjust uh, the lighting effects along uh, the speed and of course the direction as well. So that's awesome. Moving on to the performance tab and that's where you have the ability to adjust the DPI. But what's really interesting is you can assign uh, an individual color to a certain DPI. So if you are switching between certain DPI levels, the mouse will actually illuminate uh, at a specific or respective color depending on your choice. And what's even cool is that there's a little pop-up notification that shows on the desktop uh, indicating what DPI level you have chose. So all these little things really add to an amazing experience uh, using the Pulsefire Surge. And finally, there's macro recording on the Pulsefire Surge along with the ability to store profiles within the mouse. So that's pretty nice. So to conclude, the Pulsefire Surge from HyperX is a fantastic mouse for the price. At $70, you really can't go wrong with this mouse because you're getting an amazing uh, package with great sensor performance. The button clicks of the Amman switches are fantastic. The body by itself is also very comfortable to use and you cannot go wrong with the lighting uh, on this mouse because it really competes with what Razer offers with some of their uh, gaming mice as well. So really, it, it is an awesome package. Uh, for $70. And I think this starts an interesting conversation as to what HyperX has planned for the future. Because if you think about it, uh, HyperX started selling fantastic gaming headsets within the sub $100 price range. And then they moved on to uh, gaming keyboards, starting with the Allo FPS. Then came the Allo Elite, which we've done a full review on and you can check it out right over here. Uh, and then they came up with the RGB version of that lead uh, where you can adjust the color uh, or the RGB lighting through the driver software. So just like what Corsair has with their gaming keyboards, their gaming mice and their gaming headsets, HyperX is taking the same approach uh, by introducing this whole new uh, ecosystem of gaming peripherals. And I'm really curious to know your thoughts on the Pulsefire Surge. Is it an underrated mouse for 2018? But more specifically, if you're looking for a mouse within the sub $100 price range, and if you don't want to spend 80 or $90 on a gaming mouse, um, and considering that this is only this only cost like $70 and you get an amazing package for that, you know, with great RGB lighting, fantastic sense of performance and just great ergonomics, would you actually consider this? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out our new Boot Sequence channel for the latest tech news and rumors. And you can also watch some relevant content over here. I'm signing off. And I'll see you guys in the next one.